Uh, you know, I had a lot of time to work on Trespassing. Apart from maybe two or three outside gigs over the course of about a year, I had nothing going on. So I, I devoted a lot of time to going to the studio, working with different writers and producers, and getting to really experiment and take my time with everything was helpful. We had like an initial date when we were gonna release it, and then it kind of came up on that deadline, and I was like, ah, I don't think we're ready yet. I just wasn't satisfied, and that's one of my personality traits that is like a blessing and a curse. I think in this case it was a blessing, because I think it, it, it pushed everyone, including myself, to write a couple more tunes, uh, fine-tune the stuff we did have and really make the album even more cohesive, I think. And I think with, with the track listing, the way that I kind of thought of it was in the beginning of the album, I have songs that were very inspired by kind of throwback stuff, like old funk disco and house songs. And so the album kind of starts off a little more retro, even though it's produced in kind of a modern new way. And then slowly it keeps progressing and the production gets a bit more modern as it, as it goes on. On the first half of like the, the upbeat dance side, it goes from kind of like disco funk to like current pop. And then there's like a breaking point where all of a sudden we get into like uh, a slightly more emotional place and it gets a bit darker. So it, it follows this, this interesting arc in a way. When my label said, you know what, do you want to work with Pharrell? I thought, if he, works with, if he wants to work with me, I'm, I'm down. I mean, I'm, uh, anything Pharrell wants to do, I'm good with. He's shaped so much of pop and hip hop over the past decade and I didn't really know which direction he was gonna take me in. And when I got there, he played me uh, an idea, like a basic idea, which was the beginning of Trespassing. And we sat and talked about the music industry and life, and I told him that in many ways I still felt like I had something to prove, or I had something to break into with the music industry. And so that's why we wrote Trespassing. It was about all of those things. And I think the result is this amazing, almost empowerment anthem. But it's an empowerment anthem where it's not so preachy, it's, it's more kind of just a matter of fact and kind of badass and, and rebellious, which I love. It's a little mini tour of Europe, three shows in Eastern Europe and three shows in London. I'm like, I'm so pumped. I think it's gonna be crazy. I, I think it's gonna be a big growing experience. I have some songs that I don't quite know all the way yet, so I have some things to learn. I don't know what I'm wearing yet. Hopefully it's fabulous. Uh, and I'm, I'm just looking forward to pay tribute to great songs of Queen, to the legacy of Freddie Mercury. My goal for the evening is just to sing the out of the songs, you know, is, is to like just try to, you know, in, in listening to the recordings and looking at the songs, trying to understand what the intention was behind them. I and mean, I think Freddie, one of the things that made him so brilliant is you, you always understood what he was trying to communicate by the way his voice sounded and the lyrics and his phrasing and his energy. And so I think my goal is to just try to communicate the same idea. So I'm gonna try to be myself up there, but pay respect in, in a tasteful way. One of my favorite Freddie Mercury performances is when, I think it was in Montreal where he's barefoot in the shorts. And I'm just like, he's just wearing those little shorts up there and no shoes. He doesn't give a about anything. And I love that. I love how free he was on stage. And he's just up there in those little white shorts. <laughs> it's so funny. 